Hello everyone, this is H to the Husky Husky here. He says first, I am going to be bringing you a very, very, very special game here. It is brought to you by Team Liquid. It is going to be a two versus two versus two versus two. So it's a free for all of four two player teams. And if you're wondering what they're talking about, I checked with the people who sent me this replay. And basically the teams got all messed up. So right now this talking that they're doing right now is they are trying to figure out the teams because this is a map where you share a base. So as you can see right here, so say we have Tyler, he is sharing a base up here with Haypro. So, and then there is, I believe one entrance for the entire base. So here is the one interest shared bases. So two versus two versus two versus two. Now I am going to introduce you to the players right off the bat. We do have Liquid Nazgul, who is the owner, founder. He's been with Team Liquid forever. He is the main guy there for Team Liquid. He is awesome. I met him at BlizzCon. Great guy. He is playing from out of Europe. So while he was playing this game, he was playing in Europe. His ally is going to be Huck. Everyone knows Huck. He is a phenomenal Protoss player. Consistently the best player, our best Protoss in North America, hands down. And so they are team number one. Team number two is going to be Liquid Tyler, also known as Nooney. But from now on, he will forever be known as Liquid Tyler, a very top tier Protoss as well. Also someone I met at MLG. He is a great guy. He is playing from the United States. Huck, on the other hand, is playing from, uh, I believe he's in South Korea right now. Tyler's ally is going to be Liquid Haypro up here as the Purple Tarrant, another great player as well. He is also currently living inside Korea for to play for, for playing StarCraft 2. Now, the other team, team number three, is going to be Liquid Jinro, who is playing in Korea. And also, he is playing in his round of eight in the GSL tonight. So if you are uh, watching this, the first day is uploaded. Make sure to cheer for Jinro all the way to the round of eight. Not too shabby at all. Hopefully he will win and advance to the round of four. His ally is going to be the one and only Liquid, the little one. Everyone knows the little one. He is the world's cutest German, and he is currently playing from Germany. That is where he was playing this game from. So we have players from all around the world, and we apparently I think this replay was sent to us by either Jinro or uh, the little one because we can see their team chat. You can't see everyone's team chat. Only theirs. So he is expanding right away. And the last team, team number four, is Liquid Rhett right here. He is also playing in Korea, and his ally is going to be it is not sock it is actually liquid drone who from way back in the day was one of the very first players on the team liquid team i think he's actually officially the first player so uh, team liquid was founded a long time ago in a galaxy far far away it's been around forever so to have liquid drone in a game is epic it's legendary and really to have any of these players it is awesome so Rhett right now is looking for revenge from the last game i believe he was mad at nazgul for cannon rushing him which nazgul was possibly looking to do that but his probe did not make it there soon enough anyways if you guys did not see the free-for-all that I cast from Team Liquid then you definitely need to go check it out it is amazing and it has Rhett getting cannon rush it's absolutely hilarious if you haven't seen it I will hopefully post it as a video response or something like that so again big thanks to Team Liquid uh, for providing this replay and not only that the fact that all these players are willing to do this I mean this is a big chunk out of their day that they could have been using practicing for say the GSL so for them to do this it is a complete fan service they're doing it because they want StarCraft to be shown in a positive light they want everyone to watch it and have fun so definitely give them a big thanks that is absolutely awesome and I am super super excited I don't know if my computer is going to be able to handle the epicness of this so if it lags I apologize but to be completely honest I don't know what computer could handle a game this epic especially considering I'm having to record it and it is at full 1080p so I cannot wait to get this underway no one's really died yet which uh, does not surprise me I guess they're respecting each other a little bit red actually hiding an expansion way down here it looks like Huck's going for an expansion as well a lot of these players going for really heavy macro play right off the bat which is always dangerous in these big big games so right now it does look like Infestation Pit on the way for the little one could potentially be going for ultra fast hive tech or just going for Mass Infester. We saw in that free for all when the little one was playing Terran, he actually went for Mass Raven. It worked out really well for him and maybe potentially going to go for that Mass Infester, which is actually pretty good if you have the micro for it. Now, since he did get his expansion so early, he is going to get static defenses here. Jinro even has a bunker going down as well. And again, Sock is not Socket, is Liquid Drone, just to, just to clarify that. Now, 
Now, it's really funny to watch these high-level players play in a game like this because it is nothing like one versus one. You have to play completely different than you would in a normal one versus one. So it's fun to see which players adapt. Right now, Tyler is going a standard opening here, getting his robotics into a second gateway, and he does already have the robotics base, so he does have a Colossus on the way as well. And I'm going to leave this production tab open because there's no way I can spot everything that's going on in this game. Huck is currently getting the Graviton Catapult as well as rushing straight two carriers. I think he did this something similar in the other game, and it looks like Huck now has his expansion up. He, oh, what am I missing? Am I missing something going on? They are talking about hacks happening on here. And I am going to do my best. I'm watching this mini-map like a falcon to try and make sure I don't miss anything. We do have some infestors now on the field for that fungal growth. You can also get burrow and use mass infested Terran. Always a good strategy. I like players that are expanding here right away. A bunch of drones transferring down here. Could have potentially got intercepted there. But it does look like Red is going to secure this expansion. No problem. He does have his, his main fully saturated as well. So a, a lots of heavy macro. And it looks like Tyler and Hey Pro are on the move. They want to put the herd on. But Jinro has double expoed. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold this though. A couple Marines are going to be defending that and trying to slow it down as much as possible. Obviously not going to be enough, though. The SCB gets sniped immediately. This command center only about 10% away from being completed. It did have to finish, and if he would have been able to lift that off, probably could have saved it. The little one doesn't want to lose this Overlord, though, that is slowly floating over there. Nazgul going to be helping out with some static defense at this expansion as well as Nazgul. <laughs> oh man, look at that. Using the contaminate on there so it can no longer produce probes. That, that'll wear off of there pretty soon. That is from the Overseer. So anyways, all these players, I just want to take a look. We have Neural Parasite on the way for the little one as well. There's the supply counts for everyone. It looks like Jinro has the least out of everyone. Now he doesn't. It is now Drone. But everyone's fairly even there. Of course, all the races are a little bit different. Look at the creep spreading here from Drone. He's definitely on top of that one. That's going to be creep touching here. No one likes to touch your creep against someone else's creep, but that is exactly what's going to happen here if that continues with those creep tumors. We have a Spire on the way for Rhett, so he's playing more standard. Probably going to be going Zergling Muta, something like that, which, oh, wait, no, he has an Infestor. Was that an Infestor? I think I saw an Infestor egg. Yes, he does. He's having Infestors as well. And again, the little one just going at a hilarious build. He's slowly moving his spine crawlers down here. We do have Siege Tanks here trying to prevent that, and even an Infested Terran out on the field to try and delay this expansion. I don't know that anyone's going to be able to secure this, but the little one is going to attempt to. Keep in mind that Hydras right here can just basically lock down this entire expansion once they do have that range upgrade. So the entire map is getting covered in creep here from all these Zerg players, and not only Zerg players, but top tier Zerg players who are going to spread that creep. Now, it's kind of funny if you look at the map. This blue looks almost identical to Hey Pro, so hopefully that won't be too confusing as this game goes on. Look, at all these players are just expanding like bonkers here, taking almost every single expansion. We have the high yield expansion in the center getting taken right now. Rhett going to be the first one to move into that area, and the opposite sides are low yield, uh, normal yield expansions, and it looks like Hey Pro is securing that one as well. So Nazgul now is on the move. I'm going to close this production tab just for a little bit. It's taking up like the entire screen. And Jinro's saying he's just going to go for mules, which he does have one or two down here. And mules are indeed amazing, and SCVs are overpowered. So it looks like Nazgul is going to be moving down here to the bottom right side. I don't know if Rhett is going to have anything in position to deal with this, as Nazgul even force fielding there. Probably not even going to lose a single unit in this attack. A couple of Zerglings here from Drone coming down, as well as more Zerglings from Rhett, although Rhett having... Infester is not the best choice. They don't even break through the shields of these units once you fungal growth them. Trying to get a couple Infested Terrans out here, but this is not going to do anything. There's only four Infested Terrans, and it definitely looks like Nazgul will be able to lock this down. Zerglings and Mainlings trying to reinforce this. Don't know if it's going to be enough, though. Rhett needs to make sure to save his drones, although I don't know if he's going to be able to save them at all. He's going to lose so many drones here down here in the bottom right side. He is trying to save this with more Zerglings, using them at least as a diversion to get the drones out of there, but Force Field's going to prevent the Zerglings from getting any sort of surround. Not that there was enough there to kill that. Anyways, Nazgul already putting down a pylon, looking to secure that potential expansion. And we have some uh, <laughs> harassment over here with these siege tanks. A couple of Zerglings, fungal growth going down on those Zerglings. Rhett's going to continue running his drones way into the main. Now the Little One's Infestor count is getting a little bit out of control. He needs to make sure to keep these live though as they are very soft and very weak, but he mind controls one siege tank and is going to try and kill it here. It does force the medevac away, although the medevac could be mind controlled if he's not careful. The medevac's looking to pick up this, this siege tank right here. I don't know if it's actually going to happen or not. No, the siege tank goes down, but then he fungal grows on top of the medevac and gets down a couple infested Terrans. Can he kill the medevac? Is this going to barely get away there with 6 HP, but then another fungal growth. The siege tank able to escape out of there, playing a little cat and mouse. 
these drones apparently transferring down here, not realizing that it is now Tyler territory, or Nazgul territory, excuse me. So they are all going to die, those poor, poor drones. So Rhett already off to a not very good start. Nazgul is securing this expansion down here with these cannons, so he will be engaging, or he will be defending this pretty heavily. I like, I like the use of cannons there to try and delay it there. And it looks like nearly every expansion is going to be taken here pretty soon. One probe was trying to secure that. Tyler did manage to intercept that. He also has the high yield expansion on the way. Something that the little one is probably going to want to do something about. Fungal growth on one roach, which is trying to take down this hatchery. He's going to definitely have his work cut out for him, though. So that did not do that much there. It's just funny to see fungal growth on units that you don't normally see them on. So Tyler going really standard here, getting stalkers and the colossus. However, Huck's carrier count is now getting a little bit out of control. He's still producing off of two stargates and no, three stargates. Stargates, excuse me, and he has been Corona boosting out the attack upgrades out the little one, trying to get some static defense here. It is not going to work. Fungal growth going down on top of these roaches, which will allow the siege tanks to blast them away. And it does look like Drone going to continue pushing up here, but the Infested Terrans are going to be too much. Infested Terrans are free simply because of that energy, so losing attacking units like roaches to them, never a good choice. And that attack definitely did not work. So I'm going to bring up the army size tab. Again, the teams are grouped in two, so you can kind of see which teams are ahead right now, which teams are doing well. It looks like Huck is now on the field with these carriers. Keep in mind, though, that a bunch of Vikings will make these carriers worthless, although right now they are not going against such a thing. So here comes the battle right now. My computer is lagging like balls, but the Blink Stalkers are going to try and get up here to start killing the carriers. Huck trying to micro back. More units are going to be running up here. A bunch of Stalkers, though, are going to be going down to these Colossus. However, I think this is probably enough carriers. I can't imagine that it's not, as it is way too much for my computer to handle right now currently getting eight fps that is how beastly this attack is going and that is all going to go down to these carriers it looks like not enough blink stalkers there to deal with it although some blink stalkers are going to run up here and try to snipe some carriers i don't know if there's enough there is some marines here getting healed by the medivacs more marines stimming up and running over here to try and intercept them not sure what these colossus are doing here right under the carriers they're as tall as the carriers actually clipping through the carriers they're so tall and so six carriers do remain there for Huck, and it looks like there was an infested Terran battle over here. Rhett now does have Broodlords on the field trying to secure this expansion out here. However, they could very well be mind controlled if he's not careful. One's getting mind controlled. Now, infested Terran's going down as all these Broodlords are mind controlled. Two of them are, though, are going to escape out of there. Nothing else really going on in the center of the map, so we're going to go back over here as the infested Terrans are focused firing down. They're actually doing friendly fire to these Broodlords because they are mind controlled, so he wants to kill them as quickly as possible. Some Roach is running up here, though, to clean that out. So Rhett does have three Broodlords now still on the field. He could try and harass. I don't know if it's going to be enough though. It looks like Carrier is trying to make something happen down here. Although there is a cannon attack up here. A bunch of SCVs getting pulled off the line. So look to try and deal with this. Although the mules are just getting in the way for the SCVs from killing the pylon. They are the idiots of the Terran army. Is this pilot going to go down or is every SCV going to die? It's hard to tell. At the same time, there is going to be a bunch of carriers engaging down here. Some Zerglings running up here at the same time. And all those SCVs except for three go down. Liquid Jinro celebrating that victory. Victory, but at what cost? He literally lost like 20 SCVs plus some mules to that. It looks like though he is going to be able to kill this with those Marines. And so right now the carriers is a very tense moment if you are Huck and Tyler slash Haypro. As the carriers are now encroaching on territory, however, there are those Vikings I was talking about. It could be enough to take out these carriers if he focus fires. Blink Stalker's running down here to try and kill as many carriers as possible. One carrier does go down. The rest of them somehow remaining though. The focus firing not picking up the weak ones in time and needs to make sure to keep these Vikings alive as the carrier count is getting a little bit ridiculous. Now you gotta remember that he also has three attack upgrade already. One armor. So these carriers are killing units as quickly as they possibly can. There is Bailing Roach just kind of rolling around except they're not rolling because there is no Bailing Speed. Focus firing down one more carrier. This is how many remain though as more are now spawning for Huck. Keep in mind the carriers do spawn with Interceptors, so as soon as they're on the field, they are able to do damage. Invested Terrans just blasting through this high yield expansion. Look how quick they kill those probes. No upgrades actually in, uh, on those Invested Terrans. Pretty surprising. There is an attack down here on the bottom side. It does look like Nazgul's expansion will go down to a bunch of roaches at the same time. There is going to be scans, I guess, the Vikings so they can chase these carriers. There is not enough, though, as these Vikings do not have any sort of attack upgrades whatsoever. Genro sending down a bunch of Marines over here, intercepting these poor reinforcements of Hey Pro, just killing everything. And now the Colossus, though, going to be killing a bunch of these Marines. Genro saying he needs to free up some supplies, so sending in all of his SCVs down here to attack. There is some infested 
uh, investors down here as well, but they're getting blasted away as the scan has spotted them. Something is spotting these investors, and they are not doing as much damage as the little one would like. At the same time, though, there's a massive attack over here by the little one. Infested Terrans going down everywhere. Infested Terrans versus Roach, and then the Infested Terrans are going to bail out of there, and it looks like Nazgul not actually doing anything with those guys. They're just running around. Although the investors is getting blasted away by siege tanks as there was an observer right there. Even a cannon going to be spotting that. It does look like the attack has completed on the center left side, and hey, Pro does have this left expansion as well as Jinro trying to secure this one, but it is going to get taken out by Tyler, and it looks like Tyler is going to try and secure that expansion as well. Just look at the map. Look at how much stuff is going on in this game right now. There are just units everywhere. Kind of curious on the APM here. World's highest APM, I'm sure, game in existence. So it looks like Rhett, though, not in the best of shape as he has... He says, why am I still in this? Or why am I not dead yet? But uh, anyways, investors here are going to be throwing down some more infested Terrans. Fungal growth on those pros. They cannot mine. They're just sitting there humiliating as they are getting destroyed here. These infested Terrans doing a lot of damage and investors getting set on fire is always fun to watch. The Roach is now for Drone trying to back up over here. There is going to be a drop for Haypro. He is going to have to load that up though and get out of there as that drop just did not do anything effective whatsoever. So Tyler, the one with the most losses in this game so far with 15,550 minerals, not the best place to be in. Although it's just so funny to me how, how the little one has units all over the map just kind of burrowed. And there is another drop going over here. Although again, these siege tanks really paying for themselves in these defensive positions, just killing those off. The little one now has transitioned into Broodlords. A couple extra corruptors just flying around the map. Queen versus Broodlord. I wonder who's gonna win that as the Roaches for Drone are gonna back out at the same time there is another battle over here as a point defense drone has gone down sniping the shots of those stalkers and I agree with with hey pro here my computer is definitely on fire my graphics card is not going to be pleased with me Huck has so many carriers right now is he in the highest bracket for supply no he's actually not the highest the highest right now is hey pro so hey pro does have a fairly sizable army although he is stuck with a lot of Marines and stuff which don't even have their combat shields yet although they do have a bunch of Vikings here trying to kill the Ravens. Keep in mind that the Ravens can use this Seeker Missile to destroy massive amounts of units that are clumped up and that could play a huge role in this game. That's probably why he's trying to get those, although this time opting to actually throw down some turrets. Now these Vikings are getting blasted away by the Marines, but the Marines themselves are getting blasted away by the Stalkers with those three attack upgrades. Look like Tyler's actually doing some Blink Micro here at a moment like this. A big attack going down over here though with a bunch of Ultras just trying to tear down the house, although Rhett is running them directly into carriers. And unfortunately for Rhett, there are no Scourge in StarCraft 2, so all of those Ultras just got destroyed. However, there are a bunch of Zerglings running in here for the little one, so uh, doing a little tag team action down here to try and kill Hunk as quickly as possible. Keep in mind that carriers can attack ground, but it takes them a long time to actually kill the Zerglings because there's just so many. And so uh, it doesn't look like that, that Fleet Bacon is going to go down but still a valiant effort there nonetheless. More investors, more Zerglings, as well as a bunch of Marines trying to take out Colossus, which is not a good idea. Going to be Nero parasiting all of these Colossus, it looks like, as many as he possibly can. A potential misclick there, finally getting that second Colossus, so the little one really utilizing these investors to the most highest degree possible. And he will be killing the rest of these bosses, it looks like, as well, with those Infested Terrans. And again, no upgrade on the Infested Terrans. They do get exponentially more powerful if you indeed get those upgrades. So now Huck looks like he's long-distance mining down here as minerals are getting scarce. And Haypro lucky to have this expansion on the left side as most players do not have expansions that are easily defendable. It looks like Drone has one as well. So Huck definitely needs to expand here pretty soon. He is not max supply, and he does not have a expansion, I believe, that he's fully mining from. No, this one only has a couple, which is why he has Long distance mining the rest now. A bunch of roaches down here, as well as Banelings trying to intercept. It looks like these long distance mining probes. I don't know if these roaches are going to be able to do anything effective, though. There are some Banelings in this mix, but they are now cornered by these carriers. They're doing so much damage, and the Banelings are going down to the carriers as well. So it looks like Drone's army just kind of get destroyed here, although they do have a burrow. At the same time, Broodlords now flying out across the map to secure both of this. Look at this long distance mining with Mass Mule by Jinro. That just shows you how desperate every player is in this game for minerals. So long distance mining the high yield minerals and the little one doing everything he can to keep these alive. Looks like he could potentially lock down this expansion as well. The splash damage going to destroy these SCVs really quickly. 
That is one bad thing about Siege Tanks against Broodlords is they do a lot of splash damage to their own units because the Broodlings spawn extremely quickly. So it looks like Red's still hanging in there with a couple of resources, a couple of Ultras on the field. A lot of Vikings though from Heypro going to thwart this attack away as the uh, Broodlords were forced to evacuate out of there as there was no anti-air in position to deal with it. Now Jinro does have a bunch of Ravens here. Keep in mind the Seeker missile can be very effective which is what we're seeing go down right now or at least tearing. I don't know if it actually killed anything or not. A bunch of Siege Tanks though going to be bombarding over here. And the Hunter Seeker missile going down on the Siege Tanks, which not the most effective there because Siege Tanks do not clump up and Seeker missiles are all about that splash damage. So Huck so far has been very timid uh, 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 very timid with his carriers overall in this game because he has not flown out across the map to kill everything. He's just kept them alive to the best of his ability. Now we really need to see upgrades I think on these Vikings. I think that's going to be the only thing that is good against him. It looks like the little one now has ran out all the way across the map once again to do as much damage to Huck as possible. Do we have upgrades for these? Yes, one attack, one armor on the Zerglings. They're going to be able to tear down the space very quickly. However, the carrier count is completely bonkers right now. 19 carriers on the field, although the Fleet Bacon has gone down, so Huck is going to be forced to rebuild that. Not sure why there's a cannon randomly in the back of his base. Is there an attack going down over here? Yes, there is. There are Storms and Colossus killing all of these Marines. The two attack, two armor upgrade is not going to be enough. No, these Vik are these Ravens are going to fly right at the Vikings. They need to turn around and be careful here. As Seeker Missile is going down, but the Vikings are going to run away. If the Vikings run long enough, this it will not blow up or do anything. It will just be a dud. So these Vikings are forced to run around from these. You can see they are chasing them there with that little tail, but they will eventually run out. Chase away Viking with Raven. This is so many carriers. I don't know if anyone's going to be able to stop this, although there is a lot of counters. Mass Viking, Mass Corruptor would be good. Fungal Growth, that's not actually going to do anything. Again, it does not even break through their shields. So it does look like uh, Drone now is going to be losing an expansion that one of the last remaining expansions with a lot of minerals on it. Fungal Growth on top of these Vikings, though. Now he needs to be doing the. There we go. Blowing up all the Vikings there when they were Fungal Growth. And that goodbye, Vikings that Seeker Missile and these Siege Tanks though able to hold the line right now and try to Seeker Missile everything he can but Ravens are not cheap so he needs to make sure to actually keep those alive. Now the battle cruisers, our carriers rather, are now going through killing all these creep tumors. I'm assuming there's an observer right there to be able to spot this. So he is just sweeping through this creep. He's got his ShamWow that's going to absorb all this creep with these carriers and there is going to be a counter attack with the little one into uh, drone space. Not a lot they can do right now. Actually he does have quite a few Zerglings but they may potentially run past these carriers as well as they are attempting to run to defend it although it looks like he was able to defend it or the little one backed out regardless the base is not dead and Huck I think is definitely the power to be reckoned with right now I think that red has left the game I'm not sure if uh, I no, no he's still in the game he's still got a couple APM going the little one currently has four APM maybe this thing is it might not even be able to keep up because of so much stuff that's going on right now but man, this game is just not going to give me a break. This is definitely testing the abilities of my commentating power prowess as there is just so much going on. More Zerglings going to be running down here as it looks like Drone is trying to make something happen with what little units he does have. It does look like Tyler's probes are going to get annihilated there and able to lock down what little remained of this expansion. Little one continuing to run around and ooh, actually interestingly enough did not kill that expansion there even though he easily could. Burrowing some Zerglings down here. Probably going to do a run by with the rest of these. Carriers cannot chase Zerglings. They are way too fast although several Zerglings did die there of course because that's a lot of carriers which now have three attack, three armor, and one shield. So they are getting more and more robust as the game goes on. So it does look like Tyler and Haypro still in pretty good shape though. And just looking at the army sizes here, uh, Nazgul has five supply. So he is definitely doing really good here. I don't even think he has enough to make a nexus. No, he does not. And something is going FML, but fat chance of me actually spying it. Here come a bunch of Ravens right now. The expansion was muled. At that, God, that expansion got mined so fast because of those mules. And so Tyler and Haypro are going to be moving out to try and get a little bit of map control. What is going on over here? Super long distance mule mining. I don't even know if they're going to be able to make one trip before they die, but they somehow will. As that is the longest mining mules I think I've ever seen in StarCraft 2. Probably the longest mule travel distance I will ever see. And Huck now just securing expansion. More fungal rows on top of these carriers, but again, they do not do that much damage to the carriers. They have so much HP, so much shields that it would take probably 50 fungal rows to kill them. That may 